ministering around the world, watching people be set free, and I was struggling with depression and rejection. I would go home and for three days at a time, I would have the curtains closed with the comforters over my head, crying, not understanding why. The enemy would talk to me and he would say, if you were to die today, they would find another Tasha. People would forget about you. And I remember the Lord came to me and he said, what you're dealing with is a spirit of rejection. And he said, you have to curse that tonight. So I woke up and I began to study the spirit of rejection. And every morning, And every night, I would declare over myself, I curse the spirit of rejection, and I receive the spirit of adoption. Every morning, I would look myself in the mirror, and I would say, I curse the spirit of rejection, and I receive the spirit of of adoption. And attached to that, there were anxieties and phobias, and I would be literally traveling around the world on airplanes. I remember one night, we were flying somewhere, and on the plane, I began to have an anxiety attack. I mean, breathing, could barely breathe. My heart is beating so fast. And it's great to have people around you who are connected to Jesus because my friends and my team, they were sitting nowhere near me, but they sensed in the spirit that they need to come. And so out of nowhere, Kenny and my cousin, they came and I was having an attack and they laid their hands on me and they said, you are free by the power that's in the name of Jesus. And immediately that anxiety went away because we serve a God, even though daily, it's a daily walk with Christ. Even now, every single day I say, I curse the spirit of rejection and I receive the spirit of adoption because the attacks will come. The attacks will come. That's the enemy's job to continue to attack us. But we have authority over the enemy and every attack of the enemy has to be cast down by the power that's in the name of Jesus. So anytime anxiety or fear or depression tries to show up in your life, you begin to declare that I curse every spirit of rejection and I receive the spirit of adoption. I am a king's kid. I am a child of God and I have authority over it. You want me to pray? I don't know. I don't know what to do. <laughs> He's like, just sing, just lead. You know what? I started telling this story around the world, and I realized that a lot of times we don't like to talk about it because it seems so personal. You know, people want you to think that you're crazy if you have things going on in your mind. But the Bible specifically says for us to renew our minds. So I was thinking one night, I was like, you know what? A lot of times the attacks that we that happen to our bodies, anybody just have like allergy issues, just agitations, headaches, migraines, all of those things, they're not, they're not after your body, it's after your mind. Have you ever thought about that? Because the enemy knows that if he can attack our minds, he can stop our purpose. If he can get us off focus from our destiny and what God has called us to do, then he can stop us from doing our assignment in the earth. So every single day, you have to take authority over your mind and tell the enemy, you cannot have my mind and I will not be consumed in all of these crazy and weird thoughts. Can we just be real? That sometimes this world of social media and everything is just moving so fast and the world just looks so big and then it becomes overwhelming. Can we do this? I've been saying this to all of my mentees. Let's keep social media in its place. It's not a God. It doesn't define who we are. We can use it as a tool for the kingdom of God, but it's not a God. If I see some of my friends prospering and doing very well in social media and I'm not having the best week, I'm not going to get depressed. I'm going to celebrate them because if I know that if God is doing something great in their lives, mine is on the way. Can we do that? Because the enemy will try to use that to take our minds off of focus of what we're called to do. And I declare that that will not happen to any student in this room, that you will remain focused on what God has called you to do. Anybody have, is there anybody in here who's been struggling with your purpose? Like, what is it exactly? What am I supposed to be doing? This is what I want you to do. Every single day, begin to take authority over your mind and say, God, I want to renew my mind. And how do you do that? By reading the word of God. 
Somebody told me something the other day that was so great. They said, you know, if you're struggling to find, to feel like God is near you, begin to study the Gospels. And I said, okay, why? And he said, because you act like who you hang out with. And if you study the Gospels, you're walking with Jesus every day. So if I walk out the Gospels with Jesus Christ, then I'll begin to act like Jesus Christ. And there's no way that I can act like Jesus Christ and not know who I am. So I encourage you today to start walking with him. Start in Matthew, then go to Mark, go to Luke, and go to John. And I declare that by the time you get to John, you're going to know and feel and sense, oh, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Can we do that? I know this feels sporadic, it is, but I feel Jesus.